sema ili kukufurahisha mambo mengi watafanya ili kukuridhisha na kama mtakuwa viwanja kwa wenye jua takisha na hata chumvi nyumbani hakuna na wao kwa kunyo watakisha this is Ismail he's on the way to the beach tiny beach in Kenya Ismail knows what his customers want. Cigarettes, for example. You can buy them from him in singles. But he's also something special in his belt bag. Roasted cashew nuts. They are home roasted. That's why everyone calls him the cashew man. Cashew nuts are expensive, even in Kenya. But then tourists are well-off customers. 200. 200. On a lucky day, he'll sell five or six bags. That will make him about 10 euros. <laughs> it's the following morning, and we are about five kilometers from the beach. We are following Ismail and his daughter Shununi into the bush. They want to show us how the cashew trees grow and what a cashew nut looks like in its natural state. A bullock also wants to use the path. Shununi is nervous, but a little persuasion gets him out of the way. What first strikes on is this so-called fake fruit, also called the cashew apple. Cashew apples make up the outer part of the cashew, from which the real fruit hangs and the real cashew nut lies within. Here it looks as if monkeys have been bitten into the apple, and so the inner part has fallen out. Ismail shows us what an intact cashew looks like. On top we see the fake fruit, which has already gone hard, and underneath the real fruit. These trees belong to Ismail's neighbors. And you can collect cashews here? It's allowed if you take a sample like, like this. But he is not allowed if you t t collect him all. I'm allowed to collect a few, but when it's a lot, I have to pay. He's allowed. Yes. Uh, to get the sample, example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's allowed. But if you come with the bag, you collect him all, it's not allowed. So if I arrived with a big basket, <laughs> that wouldn't be okay. Uh, because if you like more, you come and it, you take more, you, you, you pay money. Yeah, yeah. You have to pay. How much have, yeah, to got, yeah. have you got to pay? And how much would you then have to pay? Going by a kilo. Ah, okay. The price is decided by the kilo. Ah, okay. yeah. Cashew trees can grow to a height of 20 meters. And so to collect ripe cashews, one needs long poles. The neighbor's children have the knack and proudly show us their haul. We are at Ismail's home. The neighbor's boys brings further supplies, delivered free, a kilo for 100 shillings. Fatuma checks whether the quality is all right. Hundreds of cashews await preparation in their yard. Yeah, if you get the cashew nuts from the cashew nut tree, you will keep them in this. On so the when a batch of cashews arrives, one has to dry them dry and set them out on the ground. Then after a couple of days, they are ready for roasting. A task which is Fatima's responsibility.
She uses dried palm leaves as fuel. That saves resources. Wood is scarce in Kenya and the forest authorities do their best to prevent illegal tree felling. This is Wanam Toto, the youngest daughter. Fatuma spreads out the coals, though that all the cashew apples get enough heat and the stone hard shells begin to crack. It is hard to imagine that perfect cashew nuts are hiding in these blackened nuggets. Before anything else can be done, the fruit has to cool down. You, you keep here for one hour to get to the it takes about an hour for the cashews to cool down. Then you, you can then crack them open. Then you can start breaking. Yeah, then you can start breaking. Each cashew fruit is cracked open individually and the nut extracted from the shell. The work involved is hard and time-consuming, which is reflected in the relative high price of these little delicacies. Polishing comes next. Each nut must be cleanly peeled. Shununi and her 13-year-old sister have already been at this work for some hours. Strict hand hygiene is needed for the next stage. For Kenyans living in the bush and with no access to electricity, cooking on an open fire is the norm. The polished cashews are now brought to the pot for roasting. A traditional wooden spoon is used to ensure that the cashews are browned evenly. And now a little salt is added. All this creates a delicious flavor for which Ismail and Fatima's roasted cashews are well known on the beach. And now they are ready. The nuts now have to cool down. Today they are not very brown, but that happens when everything is done by hand. Fatuma brings the quantity which will be sold today, while Ismail fills the 200 gram packets, and his wife attends to sealing the bags. One last check and the first two bags are ready. It is now four in the afternoon 
and time for Ismail to pack his little belt bag. It will take him about half an hour to reach the beach on his bicycle, riding through the bush. He then has two hours in which to sell his cashews, because the sun goes down at half past six in Kenya. Business is then over for the day.